exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Mari. And today to join me in the G-spot is Michelle Sproles. Don't get nervous. G-spot means guest spotlight, okay? <laughs> Michelle is the owner of the Pink Line Active, founder of Youth Track Club, West Coast Elite Youth Track Club, and wife of NFL pro Darren Sproles. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for the having me. The crowd goes wild. Yes. Super excited to have you. Yes, I'm excited to be here. Yes, we're going to be talking about my partner's wins are my wins. That's today's episode. Okay. So I felt like you have a lot to share about that. You're a wife, a mother, also running uh, multiple businesses. And oftentimes it can be extremely hard, um, you know, when you have a partner that's in the spotlight. So in just a second, we're going to talk about that. Okay. But I would have to ask you our very spicy spice breaker. This is how we open it up all the time. <laughs> all the guests, right? They got to start with this. Share with me when you first fell in love with yourself. When was that first moment that you were like, I'm kind of the bomb. I, I love myself. Ooh, when I, fell, when I first fell in love with myself, I would actually say... Um, maybe after I was diagnosed with breast cancer, mm. I think, um, losing a part of me that, you know, having a mastectomy, um, and having to look at myself and look at my body mm. and process that and still love myself. Um, I think that would be the time that I really could say that I fell in love with myself. Wow. In spite of not having something that generally, um, women identify with did you in that moment like you find out the news was there a point when you ever were angry with your body or felt like your body turns on you you felt out of love with yourself and then you had to fall back in love with yourself absolutely in the beginning the, all of those things went through my mind all of those thoughts um you know how can my body betray me I've been an athlete all my life mm. I've taken care of my body I don't I'm not a smoker I'm not a chronic drinker so in my mind, I'm thinking I'm doing all the right things, and yet this still happens. But um, I definitely feel like God gives his uh, toughest battles to his toughest uh, soldiers. So mm. I had to embrace that later. In the beginning, I was a little angry, but it's it's a grieving process. And as I went through that process and kind of chipped away at the layers, I, I got to a point where I really can say I was in love with myself. Wow. In spite of losing that. That's beautiful. Like, yeah. and I know that had to be hard on you the moment that you find out and then having to share that news with your family. How did your husband show up for you after that announcement? You know what? He was absolutely amazing. My husband actually lost his mother to cancer, not breast cancer in particular, but he did lose his mother to cancer. Um, and I think he was just prepared to fight with me to go through mm -hmm. whatever we had to go through as a family. Um, we were young. I mean, I was 28 years old. He yeah. was 28 years old. So being young and newly married and starting our family and um, it was a lot, but he was definitely supportive. Um, he always made me feel beautiful. He never, ever made me feel like um, he never made me feel like I remember when we were back at the um, at my doctor's office and we were talking about like, am I going to get the breast implants or, you know, am mm -hmm. I going to you know, do the reconstructive surgery or not? And he's like, you don't have to do that. You can you know, do whatever you want. Like he just made me feel beautiful just the way I was. So it kind of made it easier, mm -hmm. um, you know, having him there and knowing that he was supportive of me and just made me feel amazing in spite of. Was there a moment that you ever kind of saw him like get a little soft and scared? Absolutely. I think, not I think, when I know, when I first got the call, we were actually at the airport um, getting ready to pick up my grandmother and both of us were in the car together and the phone rung and my doctor was like, I have good news and I have bad news. <laughs> right. We don't ever want the doctor to say right. I have bad and news. And she said, good news is you have ductoral carcinoma inside too, stage zero breast cancer. Anytime you hear the word carcinoma, you think cancer, mm -hmm. you think the worst thing. You think death and all these, um, you know, terrible, scary things. And um, so I'm thinking to myself, how is that the good news? Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> but behind that, she said stage zero. Mm. So it was very, very early. She said the bad news was it was so much of it that I would have to have a mastectomy or not a double mastectomy, but I would have to remove the breast because it would it was such a large area of it that it would leave the breast so deformed. So before even getting into all that, when she first called me, the first thing I asked was, am I going to die? Mm. That I seen his face. It was like literally the life left out of him. 
Um, and that was the first time I can say I'd ever seen this strong man who's a football player yeah. who's always been, you know, this manly man. I, I really saw him vulnerable, and he just really looked just defeated. Um, but then when we learned about what we were dealing with and kind of started to do our research and met with, you know, oncologists yeah. and surgeons and doctors and things like that, then we kind of, then he was like, he was good. He knew what we were up against and we were good. He was like, I know how to fight this fight. Right. Okay, now that I know the information, now that I have the details. Yes, yes. Oh, my gosh. I uh, I commend you. That has to be one of the most sc scariest experiences, right? Because then you also have three girls. Yes. So I know that your mind instantly goes to, like, what's going to happen to my girls? Who's going to raise it? Is he going to be a single father? Like, right. all these ideas have to come up or these thoughts come up. Um, how did you stay positive? You know what? I really, I just, I got into my word like no other. Mm. And I just started to arm myself, you know. Um, I started to journal, um, reading the Bible, praying, listening to, like, positive music, um, posting, you know, positive affirmations, you know, everywhere. Um, I really just, I turned to God like no other. <laughs> you know, I'm yeah. on my knees praying. And I just started to kind of just arm myself and inform myself. I was researching and I changed my diet and mm. there were just, you know, I was like, you know what? I'm going to be here. I'm 28. I'm young. I have children. I have a husband. I'm going to be here. You said earlier, you were like, um, how did this happen to me? I'm an athlete. You know, I, I live this healthy lifestyle. I think a lot of us think that we can defy, you know, death sometimes, even when we're do we feel like we're doing all the right things. Mm -hmm. And then something, you know, crazy like this happens. How did you still stay true to your passion? Because you also, you know, you run a, um, a track club as well. How did you stay true to that? How did you show up for the girls during that time? Because you have like a whole team that you're responsible for and making sure that they fulfill like their fitness goals. How did you show up during that time? Um, I really feel like for me, I come from a really good family. I've I come from a two parent home. I've not really, um, you know, my parents have always done well in, in providing for me and my siblings. And um, I didn't really have a story, but mm -hmm. I've, I've always been like the old soul. I've always been the go to whether it be, you know, my older siblings coming to me for advice, my friends, you know, family. Um, and I really didn't have a place to pull from. So I mm. really feel like going through this and experiencing this, um, I feel like God intensified it just enough to give me a story, give me a place to pull from now. So when I'm kind of mentoring and when I'm um, ministering and talking to other young women, I'm able to have a place. I, ha I have a story now mm -hmm. because I really didn't have that. I was just kind of an old soul and kind yeah. of just going through life. Like I said, I come from a two parent home and I've always had what I needed. I went to school on scholarship, never really, you know, we had our struggles as a family, but it wasn't, it wasn't too bad. Yeah. Um, and I just think this was my version of the storm and, you know, God giving me, um, like a testimony, a testimony. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. So you have, like I said earlier, like multiple businesses in addition to a hair business, right? So I actually just, the pandemic hit everyone really, really hard. I had a hairline, uh, the pink line, where a portion of the proceeds went to making wigs and, ex, you know, ex, extensions for, for cancer survivors. Um, I've since kind of dissolved that. Oh, wow. And kind of moved into my activewear line where those proceeds go to supporting my track team. Um, so that's kind of what's happened with okay that. so we swapped yeah. out hair for yes. um athletic wear yes okay and then what is the passion behind the athletic wear um because I stay in it as a coach <laughs> I'm literally in in athletic clothes 24 7 so I'm I want to look good at the same time not but I stay in those in that type of you know um fashion so you know that's kind of where that came from but that's good I, I feel like our passions can change like our goals or whatever Absolutely. you know whatever walks we're going through can shift um like you I'm super super comfortable when it comes to athleisure let's mm -hmm. say like I could wear that all day long Absolutely. um live breathe wake up drop the baby off in that um <laughs> work out and then also but I, I also like staying in that because if I have the workout clothes on I'm more likely to go do the workout versus mm -hmm. like you know I'm dressed up hair makeup done like I don't feel like changing or even putting anything on if I already have it on I'm good to go <laughs> Absolutely right. so I, I agree. love that you did that I love yes. that you did that yes okay share a little bit we're gonna, I want to talk about your relationship so You've been with your partner for uh, over 11 years? We have been married for 13 years, and we've been together Oof. for about 
17. Eesh. Okay. Yeah, it's been a little while. That's a long time. All right. Yes. <laughs> so you guys pretty much essentially like have gr- grown up together. You guys kind of like raised yourselves into adulthood. Yes. Um, You are with, which like most women, when you're with a successful man, um, it can be hard sometimes to balance when it comes to the attention that you need versus the attention that they get. Right. And I felt like it was important for today's episode on my partner's, you know, uh, wins or my wins, because oftentimes when we're in relationships with successful people, we have to celebrate them a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, I want you to kind of share how you celebrate your partner, but then also make room for your shine. Um, you know, I think in, in our case, he made it a little bit easy. He's always been very supportive of me. Um, he's never made me feel like what he does is more important mm-hmm. than what I'm doing and what I'm contributing to our family. So it, I feel like that piece of it has always been pretty easy. But um, I also feel like my upbringing and my mom letting me know, like, no matter, you're individual first. And it's, it's like two people coming together. You don't want to lose who you are mm-hmm. in that person just because you're with that person. So for me, I didn't really have to, like, dim my light or not be me. He really allowed me to be me. And he fully supported that. So even though he's, you know, Darren Sproul is the football player and he's, you know, to so, so many people, he, you know, people look up to him and they respect what he's doing. When he came home, he was just Darren Sproul's the husband, mm-hmm. Darren Sproul's the dad. And I really tried to make it a point to kind of keep it that way so that the transition was easy for the both of us, where it was like, you know, you come home and you're just you um, kind of taking the football element out of it, you know? So. so he knows what he wants to do with his life. He's doing it, let's say, while you guys are maybe in the relationship or beginning. How do you then find your walk and your purpose? It took me a while. I went from having a hair salon. I owned a hair salon for almost six years in San Diego. Kinda, oh, shout out to San Diego. Yes, That's where San I'm Diego. From. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so having a hair salon for almost six years in San Diego, um, selling the hair, but really being more passionate about the purpose behind it. Um, so it, it did take me a while. Now with me having the track team, I really feel like that's my purpose. I'm in alignment with what I'm supposed to be mm. doing. So it, it took me a while. Um, but through that process, I feel like he supported me through the process. It wasn't like, you know, you need to hurry up and figure out what it is that you want to do. Because, you know, I kind of spent a little bit of money down the, <laughs> down the way trying to figure all this out. But he was he's always been very supportive. So I de- I'm definitely blessed to, you know, to have a husband. So he made room for you to kind of experiment yes. and take your space and time to, yes. to, you know, dabble and like feel, you know, what serves you out the best. Right. Absolutely. What does a celebration look like, though? So, like, a celebration for him when he has a win looks like what? And then a celebration for you when you have a win looks like what? Believe it or not, when I celebrate my husband, I go big. Okay. Um, Whether it's a birthday party, I've tried to give him, like, these big elaborate birthday parties. Um, You know, his retirement party, I kind of went big. Not kind of. I went big. (laughs) (laughs) So I do try to celebrate him on a level just so he knows that he's loved, he's appreciated, um, and we just thank him for his contribution to our family. For me, I'm actually more chill. But that's just me. I don't want the big, you know, the big parties, and I don't want the big elaborate to do um, just because that's not the type of person that I am. So for me, I'm like way more. So you were being extra because he likes extra. Actually, he doesn't <laughs> like extra. You like I just extra. like to be extra yes. for him. That's but exactly he doesn't what it like was. extra. I'm yeah. like, he's probably not asking for this like he's not. huge ass Especially because he's frugal. Oh See, my God. It's it's us as women always going over the top. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let me show you how grandiose my love is right, for you. Right, right, right. But then when it comes to you, you said, okay, you're not, it doesn't need to be as like crazy. Mm-mm. So then what does that look like? Does it look like just a day at the spa? Does it look like a party? Does it look like, how does he celebrate you when you have your wins? Um, A day at the spa. A nice bag. <laughs> a nice bag always um, a bag we, we never turn down yeah, a bag you know something like that but definitely not a party I'm definitely not a party person he actually threw me for my 30th birthday party uh, a pretty big party and I was completely shocked because that's one that's kind of like not his vibe he mm-hmm. doesn't generally do that and for me I was like now nah, you 
I don't want no birthday party because I don't want to have to entertain all these people. But he threw a party and we we enjoyed ourselves nonetheless. So yeah, you know, he yeah. Tries so because at parties it's almost like you have to perform. You have to be on. Okay. See, I love it because I'm like an extreme extrovert. I'm like, let me work the room. This is like the way that I can get my reunion on with my people. Right. right. But for people who are more low key and they just want you know maybe peace and quiet sometimes like that serves just as well. It may not have to be as extra as much money over the top you're like instead let me take this 14k that i would throw on a party and buy myself something nice. right you're more like that okay yes (laughs) yes Yes. okay talk with me a little bit though about what like i said the the spotlight piece so like if you're with someone who is used to a certain amount of shine when it comes to getting your shine did it ever feel like you were standing on the sidelines or did it ever feel like dang cameras and people are yelling for my partner um, where are my yells at? Where's, you know, my attention? Did you ever go through even just a little bit of a phase of jealousy with your partner? Um, I maybe wouldn't use the word jealousy, but maybe use the word insecure. Okay. And not always feeling, you know, adequate. Mm-hmm. Um, because I feel like our society sometimes they kind of, especially with having like social media and everything, everything is about like, you know, followers and yeah. who you know, and what are you doing? And, you know, when you're a, the partner of someone who is successful, who kind of has that status and you're kind of just off to the side, quiet, you can have those moments, mm-hmm. you know, and I have had those moments of insecurity and not always being sure of myself because I'm not the most flashy. I'm not the wife that has, you know, you know, drape dripped out and I'm just kind of more <laughs> chill and laid back and that's always just been me um but I think as years went by and just the way he made me feel um he didn't require that so it was I was okay with you know kind of just being you know in the background so to speak mm-hmm. I kind of just um kind of just did me if that makes any sense what is doing you look like though coaching um, very much involved in my kids, you know, sometimes you hear, and, and no disrespect to any women and, and mothers who have, you know, help and have nannies and things like that. I, I had a nanny as well, but I didn't have any live in nannies. I was very hands-on with my children. So I really kind of dove into that and making sure I took care of my home and I was present for my kids and I was present for my husband when he needed me. So I did, like I said, I did have those moments of insecurity, but they were just moments. Mm. I had to remind myself, you know, you know who I am and whose I am. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't get too lost in that. Um, and I think that's important to try to stay, you know, keep it in perspective and know, like, you know, I'm just here to support. I'm here to, you know, cheer him on, but also keep him grounded. So, so you affirmed yourself and then his additional affirmation was like the reinforcement that absolutely, you needed. Absolutely. Okay. Share with me a little bit about other women, though. So like. Anytime you have a successful man, I'm sorry, the ladies are going to come from, they're going to get a certain oh, amount of attention. Yeah. Like, let's just call it what it is. All right. I, so I experienced can, this. Share with us. How did you handle that? Well, I am from Compton, California. <laughs> so I'm either, you know, sophisticated and classy and keeping it all together, yeah. or I might be on the other side. Ooh. It depends. Ooh. Um, it depends on what you're giving me is what you know right. de- determines what I'm gonna give you <laughs> but I, you know quick story we were in San Diego out at a club and um young lady asked you know can you take me in you know Darren's picture no problem um oh that's big of you right and she leaned in to kiss him not on the cheek but in the mouth oh that camera flew because back then it, we, we we really weren't too big on taking camera pictures yeah we had those little cameras um I really, I mushed that girl in the face. So I've had those moments so she had where, a mush. I, yeah, yeah, she just had a mush. <laughs> but I feel like she kind of crossed the line because I was already being nice. Yeah, that's disrespectful. You know, taking the I'm picture, sorry. right? That was extremely disrespectful. Regardless of who he is, just affection towards someone that's unasked for. You know what I'm saying? Right, like right. without their authorization. Right. Period. Right. Uh, so it would be from problematic. Then, like his teammate, couple of his teammates was like, yo, yo girl is crazy. Yeah. But from then I think it was kind of like for him, you know, he, if he's out and about, it's like, keep it cool. Cause 
But let me say this. You could have done worse. So yeah, I right, commend you. Right, right. And number two is sometimes I'm a firm believer that you need to show your man just how passionate you are about him. Absolutely. And just a little bit of crazy to make sure he mm-hmm. remembers to keep him in his place. Just, yes. baby, don't forget. <laughs> I, I'm a lady in the streets. Right, right? that but part. I will F someone up as well. <laughs> Absolutely, yep. And I think he got the he got the picture that, that night. I haven't had too many problems um, out of him since then. So it's been all good. <laughs> I like when a man knows that, though, because he will, when a woman comes on too strong, he will, like, let them know, like, you know what? My girl is crazy. Right. Like, you don't even want to deal with this today. Like, you don't mm-hmm. even want these kind of problems. Right, Trust right. me. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's hilarious. Yeah. But, like, okay, so what it makes me think of, too, though, when women are coming on like that, um, and it's just, it, it, I think our culture I don't know if we encourage it, but we perpetuate this notion of like women throwing themselves at men with money, athletes, um, you know, uh, rappers, like just music, you know, artists, entertainers. Women have a tendency to do that because there's something about a man uh, that is in a position of power or a man, you know, who has authority or a man who makes a lot that we place them as like more high value men. Right. So. It's unfortunate that as women, we may not always show the amount of respect that we do. But do you ever feel like or did you ever have maybe that like Aisha Curry moment where you were like, dang, he got women throwing himself at me. I wish men, more men were sliding in my DMs or more men were affirming, you know, my value. Did you ever go through that period? I don't think I went through a period of wanting the attention mm-hmm. or wanting someone to um, show me that kind of attention because it never stopped. Ooh. <laughs> <Wait>. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about <laughs> so it's just Was a matter of drought. creating that boundary drought. and letting them know like I'm definitely not interested because I'm married um but I never really went through a period where people weren't trying to talk to me yeah. it was just like you know even with having a wedding ring people still pursue you Facts. It, you know people just don't care nowadays but for me it's like I'm married I'm good you know but I appreciate the compliment or whatever the case may be and just move around and keep it, you know, keep it pushing. But I've, I, I don't think I've gone through too much of a drought in that respect. I love that. <laughs> Let me tell you why. Um, part of what I um, speak to often when it comes to us as women is that the way that we present ourselves, just like when we step out or just, you know, when we even maybe leave the house and we, we leave a little bit of mystery or we tell what it shows to our husband or what it demonstrates is that one, we have a life, two, we're still desired. So like it creates or evokes just a little bit of jealousy within them of like, where's my wife at? What's she doing? She still looks good. Are other men hollering at her mm-hmm. because men by nature somewhat need to feel still like that hunt or even still feel as if their partner is highly sought after. Right. It evokes uh, this desire within them to still make sure, not just necessarily that they stay on their P's and Q's, but that they know like people want what I have. And that to them is like a bar. That to them is like right, it does right. shoulders off. So I love what you're saying. <laughs> like, you're like, it never stops. Um, always remind my husband. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm a firm believer. I genuinely feel like, People don't, you don't want someone that nobody else wants. Mm -hmm. I don't care what anyone says. You don't want that person to act on it. Yeah. But I mean, if like Eric, like Eric Bellinger says, if they ain't looking, I don't want her. Like who wants to be with someone that nobody else wants? I've never even heard of that. So (laughs) (laughs) tell me the love story. How did you guys fall in love? We actually met through my best friend who, um, one of my best friends, Nicole Denby, she's a pro uh, track athlete, former pro track athlete. And she was training at the same track. Um, Darren actually, his second year in the NFL, he was injured. He was on injury reserve and he was kind of working his way back to kind of make the active roster. And they were working out the same track and they became friends. And she was like, yo, I got a, you know, a friend that I want to introduce you to. I immediately thought something was wrong with him because she was single Mm. and didn't want to, you know, hadn't been talking to him. But, you know, uh, she was kind of entertaining someone else at the time. So she was like, no, I I want you to meet him. We started talking on the phone. First conversation, I want to say we were on the phone for like five hours. Aww. And... The rest is history, literally. I it love just it. Went from there, I love it. Um, yes. Friends are the best plugs. When it comes, people will hate on friends all day long, but I always say, like, friends can be really good matchmakers. Yes, because they know you. Yes, and um, majority of the time, they're putting us in settings or getting us at least like out of our house or comfort zone mm-hmm. to meet other people. Right. I probably could on my hands. I mean, I do this professionally, but like 
all, every single one of my friends has been in a relationship with someone who they met through me. Mm. And that's just because I'm always looking out, always looking out like, ooh, let me set you up with this person. Let me set you up with this right. person. We forget the power of friendship. So y'all need to hit up your friends and ask them to set you up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be humble. Okay? Right, Don't right. be in your pride. <laughs> like, look at what can happen when you take your friend's advice and you're like, okay, Absolutely. you know what? Let me give them a chance. I agree. Where does this notion of in order to bag an athlete, you got to be this certain type of chick. Because there's this stereotype that, like, the the way that a woman has to carry herself has to be a certain way in order to bag a ball player. I mean, I definitely believe what you exude as a woman kind of determines what you attract. Um, if you're confident, if you kind of know what it is that you want and you, you know, there's a certain energy that you're giving off. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to attract a certain type of man because that certain type of man is going to be confident enough to approach you. But, um, I tell my friends all the time, those who are single, um, you don't become a wife when you get married. You are a wife, you know, in the word, it says he who finds a wife, you are a wife. So you know, how you carry yourself, yeah. what you exude, the energy you give off, you know, the type of person that you are, all of that determines, you know, are you, are you a wife? Mm -hmm. And that to me is the ultimate bag. Yeah. You can date and, you know, all of that all day long, but that is the ultimate bag. And are you a wife? Are you carrying yourself like a wife? For um, sure. So I definitely feel like there is um, a certain thing you have to exude, but you know, I don't I think know. Cause you hit it with the confidence. I think that right. that was like a big thing. Like right. you're, when you're dealing with somebody who's high profile, big ego, they also are attracted to, and just men in general are attracted to women who walk through, you know, the door, very self-assured, mm -hmm. very self-possessed. Right. That's always an attractive quality for Absolutely. male and female. Mm -hmm. So I think that plays, I think you're right. I think that plays like a huge part of it. Right, right. Absolutely. I agree. 100%. So tell me what the hardest thing about your relationship or marriage has been. What do you feel like has been the biggest lesson that you've had to learn? Mm, this is going to sound cliche, but communication. <laughs> That's everybody's. Yes. It's for the sure. communication. I think for, for like, for example, um, and I'm not saying this just to uh, toot my husband's horn, but he's been the man from when he started, mm -hmm. from Pop Warner to high school to college to the NFL. So he's always kind of had everyone planning everything out for him, you know, arranging everything and kind of lining everything yeah. up. So he hasn't had to do a ton of communication because everyone's kind of just done everything for him. Yeah. Me, on the other hand, I'm kind of making him work because I'm your wife, yeah. I'm your partner, um, and I'm not going to just do everything. Now, granted, I'm taking care of our home. I'm taking care of our children. I'm making sure all that is good. But at the same time, I have needs just like you have needs. Yeah. And it's not, this is not a one-sided thing. And I think a lot of the time in his relationships, it's been one-sided. Mm. It's been just, you know, here, you know, even like when you, when you have a certain level of status and you you know are a pro athlete, a lot of times they're, they're giving you free, you know, here, you can have this. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of just like, you know, just here. Yeah. You know, but when you don't have all of that, they don't <laughs> want to do that. So for me, it's kind of like, oh, no, you have to, we, we need to you communicate. You got to work for this. Yeah, you got to work. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think it's just been the communication for us. Yeah. Would you say, um, and I'm a huge advocate of this, that you have – guided your partner to being a better husband? I would like to think I have. Um, I'm, my major is communication. So sometimes I can overly communicate, yes. but I do think that I'm pretty good at kind of help, you know, guiding him to, to be a better communicator and be a better husband. And um, I, I think I have. Well, I was just, from what you're sharing in the way that you like say that you make him step up or the way that you've made him show up for you when he's not that, you know, great of a, maybe a communicator, mm -hmm. um, that would be you like sitting in your feminine and, right. you know, allowing for there to be a loving space of like, 
hey, I'm going to nurture this relationship and let's get one thing straight. You didn't come prepackaged, ready to go. <laughs> right. And I think a lot of women, especially like the listen to my show, um, they sometimes will be like, wait, spicy, a man needs to already know I'm not trying to do any work. Like I just need him to show up like this. I've already, you know, poured into a lot of men. And I'm like, no, actually, like to your point earlier, what you said about like your already wife and you're already a husband or at least you carry yourself that way. You can try to practice all day long the skill sets of that. You can try to emulate whatever role models were in your life. But really, it's your partner when you guys get together that shapes you to become the best version of that role. Absolutely. Right. Because you can only be as good as the person who's leading or the person who's guiding you. Right. Because if you had a crap ass husband, you probably wouldn't be like the be able to be the best wife in the world. Right. Because now you're dealing with his toxicity. But because mm -hmm. you've had someone who's like, you know what? I may lead in these areas. But baby, you shine when this comes to communication. Like I'm open to learning. Right. That's a great partner right there. That's a great mm -hmm. dynamic. That's balance. Absolutely. Like we went to a, um, there's a conference uh, that the NFL hosts every year called PAO, Professional Athletes Outreach. And in this conference, um, I, they, there's different workshops and, and breakouts. And we, we try to go as much as we can. Um, we were going every year when he was still playing, but we've kind of, since not gone as much, but I've learned so much and I will never forget. I can't remember who said it, but he was like, you know, the man is the head and the wife is the neck. They have the ability to turn you which, whichever way you need to go. Yes. So ever since then, I've kind of operated in that way. It's kind of like, you know, you, you, you are the head. Mm -hmm. I respect you. I know you got us. I'm not going to let you lead us into no ditch. There you go. So, there yeah. You so, go. yeah. You know, yeah. And I like, and I'm a huge believer that like we are whispering always into the ear of our king. We can either get you to start a war or we can, you know, build your empire mm -hmm. up. What's it going to be today? That part. <laughs> yep. Yep. I, I love uh, that. 100. Yep. Okay. Talk to me though about the um, track. Like, how did that, how did you, all your, you know, passions in life, what ignited the, track club that you created because that seems like that's more geared towards like the youth. And so what was, what was that? Was that your girls? Like, where did that come from? So, um, when I graduated from college, I was actually working for, I was in Vegas. I went to UNLV when I graduated, I was working for Clark County parks and recreation. And I was kind of over a program where I would have to like, you know, put their summer programs together and just different things. And so I started mentoring kids. And then I started teaching. I was teaching seventh grade history. And so I've always kind of um, been the role of a mentor. Mm. But as a teacher, there's certain boundaries you can't cross. You know, you can't get too personal with, yeah. with your students. Um, so I knew I wanted to give back to my community and really um, get into, like, mentoring the youth. When I met my husband and, and ended up moving um, to San Diego, I started coaching on a team called Mercury San Diego Youth Track Club. And they really kind of gave me the opportunity to just run the team. Oh, I nice. wasn't the head coach, but I was definitely a big part in just kind of how how the everything was structured. Yeah. And, and so they kind of gave me my big break as a coach, so to speak. <laughs> um, and then from there, I was a head high school coach for Scripps Ranch High School. Um, and then when my husband and I decided to move to L.A., my kids were running for the team that I grew up running for, the Aww. L.A. Jets. And it, they, they are amazing. They are the foundation of who I am, not just as a track coach, but as a, as a young woman. Um, they contributed a lot of, to a lot of that. And after the pandemic, teams kind of fell apart. Things were kind of happening in the sports community, in oh, the wow. sports world, where there, were, there weren't a lot of options for youth teams, um, for track in particular. So I just kind of wanted to do my own thing. I had already been coaching yeah. in San Diego. Um, and the the roles, I've always been in, like, leadership roles for, for the team. And, and the Jets is an established team that's been around for over 50 years. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't going to be, like, a head coach out there. And, and I'm okay <laughs> with that. But um, I kind of wanted to do my own thing. So I started my own thing. Last year was um, our first season, West Coast Elite Track Club. We had an amazing season. We've had, you know, some national records. We've had uh, over – 30 all Americans. Oh my God. It was amazing. So, um, kind of just continuing on with that. And, um, I really feel like track is my ministry. It's my way to give back to the community. It's my way to really reach young ladies. And I'm you were a runner at one point. I was, I started running when I was seven 
aged out of the JET program. I went to Long Beach Poly, uh, ran high school for them, and then I got a scholarship to UNLV for track. Oh, you got a scholarship, yeah. like, to run? Yes. So are you trying to get your girls a scholarship, too? You're like, okay, let me I tell am. you how y'all going to pay so for college. So my oldest, <laughs> my oldest actually uh, got a scholarship to run for Fresno State. She's wow. actually a senior in college. Oh, congrats. That's yes. every parent's dream. Like, just yes. get to college. <laughs> yes. My youngest two, 13 and 10, um, they have a ways to go. But the goal is to get them scholarships. I mean, they do have college funds. It's a blessing that they have that fund. But a scholar free, we'll take the free money. Right, and right. we'll use this other money over here. And then it also tells else. them, like, they earned it themselves. Like, Absolutely. Yes, they could depend on their parents, right? That's, like, all of our goal to be able to send right. our kids to school. But, like, to know that you earned that spot yourself and – Thanks, parents. I kind of don't right. need this fund over here. I right. got it. Like, right. that's dope. Yeah. I know you have to be proud of yourself. I am. I am proud of and myself. And your husband has to give you the accolades, too, because you're kind of like the one who probably coached her. <laughs> yes. So my husband actually is helping me out. He coaches my sprint girls. It's like four of them. A team of 33, and he coaches four kids. The rest of them I coach. But, yes, he does help, um, you know, kind of do the whole so thing. So it looks so. like um, the tables have turned. Yes. Like you were originally were supporting his, you know, walk his purpose. Now he's supporting yours. Absolutely. Do you feel like uh, football was his job or that was his purpose? I feel like football was his purpose because there is a difference between doing something because what it can do for you or bring to you mm -hmm. and doing something because you just love it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's the difference between good and great. He absolutely loves football. Um, and he's oftentimes gotten the short end of the stick. But because of his love for the game, he's pressed on, he's continued on. Um, he's all, and he's always been able to kind of come out on the, the better side of things. Yeah. But for the most part, absolutely, I, I feel like um, that that's what he was supposed to do. Because his he's, he's given back in so many other ways and opened the door for so many – Young men, like okay, I don't know if that you know. part. Yes, yeah, so my husband is—he's five six. He literally oh, I didn't is know that. yes one of the shortest men who has ever played in the NFL. Wow! And they didn't—they didn't want to let him in, but he—but he forced his way in. Wow! Because he was that good. He put in the work. He's and, undeniable. He's like you're gonna right. let me in this. And so he's <laughs> opened the door for so many other young men that are his height, of his stature. He's kind of created a separate position for he, he, he was a third down back um what they call like a scat back those are like your shorter um running backs who kind of come in on like third and fourth down and he did like punt return and kickoff return and he kind of created another role yeah and now other teams are now going to those smaller guys oh for those that's roles. so dope so yeah I feel like he's like a pioneer okay <laughs> so sure. okay so I love this additional context because um when you were initially talking about it you were comparing, like, you know, your love of something to, um, you know, being, you know, passionate about it. But then also there's this other area that I feel like is extremely important when it comes to something being your purpose. And that's how you affect change within the world and how you give back to others. Absolutely. Supporting God's kingdom. And so when you added that to it, that piece about like, okay, but let me tell you what it's done for others. That's the part where I'm like, okay, that's purpose driven. Like yes. that makes sense. It's yes. more than a job and a career. Absolutely. And then you have that same going on for you when it comes to track where he's now contributing to you helping other women or young girls. Cause it's only females in the track it's club. All girls team. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then who do you guys, compete with like so we compete under both usatf organization as well as aau these are two different uh track organizations and we compete all over the country we travel we're a huge travel team like we um like for example the junior olympics the aau junior olympics this past season were at north carolina a&t mm -hmm. so we were there in august we went to virginia to compete indoor we you know go to arizona and run in meets and you know we kind of just travel all over now this is your organization yes so you are technically his boss? <laughs> uh, a little bit. And you know what's so funny you say that? Because we've actually bumped heads a couple times about, like, certain things that we wanted to do with athletes. Yeah. Um, and I've, I, I kind of backed up a little bit. I'm like, okay, I'm going to let you do this. But if it don't turn out right, mm -hmm. it's going to be another conversation. Because <laughs> my name is on this, too. So, yes, for sure, yeah. I love that. I work with my husband also, right? And I think that... 
part of sometimes what, what you know, and it, we, it, I can make a whole other episode about this, but like, <laughs> I think one of the challenges when you work with your partner sometimes is like when there is constructive feedback or where there are additional ideas, it's like you're protecting this thing you created, like it's your baby. Mm -hmm. And you're like, dang, anything that you have to say about that, you're talking about my child. Right. Right. So you right. want to protect it. You want to make sure that it flourishes and shines. Mm -hmm. And sometimes also you have to give some of that power away when it comes to your partner. Right. And like trusting their opinions, too. How do you balance, though, uh, maybe his ego when it comes to sports? Like he probably feels like maybe you can't tell me nothing. And you're like, wait, wait, right. I've been running this shit. Right. <laughs> so. Um, aside from him being a pro football player, he also ran track. Um, so he has some knowledge in that um, area as well. But like I told him, outside of me just being an athlete, I also went and got certified. So that, you know, I kind of put a little extra she on said, it. said, check my resume. Right, right. Check um, my reference. And I on top receipts. of that, uh, I just feel like, I don't know. I just feel like, you know, he's, example, he kind of would ask questions to other male coaches. Mm. That is the one time me and him really bumped heads because I felt like not only are you, because I already have to deal with enough being a female, little, being black yeah. and being a female black coach. Yep. I already have enough to deal with. So here you are, my husband, who goes outside. You're going to seek counsel about certain things from other male coaches mm. That's insulting, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. Um, because you didn't come to me first and kind of, it was almost, it, the way I took it was like he didn't trust what I was saying. Yeah. Um, and I don't think he looked at it that way initially. For sure he didn't. No. Um, but then after I kind of broke it down and explained it to him, then he was like, okay, I'm like, first of all, I'm going to need you to check my resume because <laughs> I was at a program that I didn't have a ton of talent. I developed the talent that yeah. was at that program. I've won state. I've won CIF and done things for a high school that it had never happened. So I was like, I was the first of many mm -hmm. for this program. And you're talking to coaches who you haven't really done that. Mm. So that was kind of like a slap in the face yeah. to me. But after I explained that to him, I think he got it. Yep. And then we kind of were able to kind of build from there. And he was like, okay, I understand. But these were just people that he knew and had a relationship with too. So he didn't think, it was like casual for him. He didn't yeah. think it was a big deal. But for me, I was like, excuse you. Right. <laughs> I think so. that's a learning lesson though for other people. When you told him like, hey baby, I'm insulted by the way that you handled this. Mm -hmm. How did that conversation look? Did you sit him down? Was it an argument? Did we like rip him a new hole at first? What does that look like when you're trying to tell um, him that he's wrong about something? It was an argument at first. Okay. <laughs> you're yeah, like, I'm I not even gonna lie. I wasn't it was nice an at argument first. at first. And then as we kind of went to our separate corners and kind of, you know, process the conversation. We came back the next day mm. and had a different type of a conversation. Oh, this was an argument, argument. Right. <laughs> the next and I day. Think, <laughs> right. I think he understood because I'm like, you know, I've kind of experienced a lot being a female coach yep. in, in the coaching industry, period. It's like our voices are often silent. Yeah. So for you, for him to do, I'm like, you're like contributing to something that we're kind yes. of fighting against. This, like, this is an issue for me. So the next day we did have a conversation. He understood totally where I was coming from. And then I think from there, not, I think for sure from there, we kind of, you know, we're able to build. You started kinda. speaking like solutions. Like, okay, right. so this is how we're going to handle it next time. Right. And right. I'm sure he obliged, he but did. you got him to see like, look, you ain't the only one pioneering over here. Right. <laughs> and like I tell him, I don't think I know everything. I'm always learning. I mean, it's, we, we're constantly growing and learning things every day. So I'm not opposed to, you know, asking questions and seeking, you know, answers from other people. But I was like, I would just, I feel like we should kind of work inward outward. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Like you want to check with your partner first. Right. And then outside, you know, sources can then contribute. But first you got to come to me first. Like, right. let me know what's going on. Right. That's right. super, super important in healthy relationships. Absolutely. How have you kept the relationship healthy? Because you guys have been married a very long time or together even for a long time. I'm sure you've had ups and downs. Every relationship does. Yes. But how do you always get back to like being in a good place with him? Um... Not being afraid to be held accountable and being okay with Huge. just simply saying sorry. You know, I didn't mean to make you feel that way. Um, I think that's super important. Sometimes we operate from a place of ego. Yep. 
And we don't want, it's like, I'm not getting ready to, I'm not going to fold, you know, <laughs> he's going to have to come to me. Yes. But I've gotten to a point now where I have to learn that it's okay for me to be the first person to say I'm sorry. Right. I was wrong. Um, that wasn't my intention. And to kind of just speak my piece on that, you know, with that and, and you know. Do you see the more that you're capable to take accountability he will? Or is he more of the person who takes accountability first in you, mirror? You know what? He's actually pretty good at taking accountability. Good. I'm not, you know, I'm not even going, I'm not even going front. He's, he's pretty good <laughs> at taking accountability. So usually I'm kind of mirroring that. I but there it. have been times where I have had to go to him first because if, if, if I was really the person in the wrong and I'm like dead wrong, yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm going to put my ego to the side and tuck my tail and go make this right. But yes, he will be the first, he will apologize. He is good, good at that. Okay. Yeah. Like, hear that accountability. Yes. Oh, and for the record, accountability doesn't look like, and I just, I have to highlight this because I deal with this oftentimes with my clients. <laughs> accountability doesn't look like, you know, um, Telling the person when you are uh, apologizing what they did wrong first and then being like, and I'm sorry, right? So it doesn't look like, you know, well, you, you know, talk too much or you lie and you did X, Y, and Z, but you know what? I guess I'm sorry. Like, that's not taking accountability. Taking accountability looks just like you highlighting what you did wrong and what you will correct for moving forward. Okay. And I know that's hard for a lot of people. <laughs> it is. It is. Because <laughs> they want to start off trying to justify or defend their choice or their behavior. And when you start off that way, it doesn't feel right. Because some of this is emotional. It doesn't feel to your partner as if you are really listening and standing true in like what you're being apologetic for. Mm -hmm. So I love that you bring this up because that's probably one of the hardest things for, you know, male and female to do in any relationship is yes. to say like, you're right. I'm, I'm wrong. wrong. Mm hmm. But let me tell you, though, I love those words. Like, <laughs> favorite words I love for my partner to tell yes. me, okay? <laughs> Sometimes I have to remind me. So what did you want to tell me right, when right. we discovered that this was not correct? This just happened. Um, my son is one years old, mm -hmm. uh, buy Coco Melon tickets. He's obsessed with Coco Melon, the TV show, okay? <laughs> Uh, there's a live show that came to L.A. My husband was like, he will never sit down and he will not watch that show. Like, you're tripping. I don't want to go. I'm going to be dealing with, you know, this crazy baby for, you know, two hours. And I'm like, no, I really believe that he's going to, like, sit down and watch the show. Man, I negotiated with him. I was like, if he doesn't, we don't have to go to anything else this year. I will give you a break from going to events. And he was like, okay, fine. Like, let's see. Princeton sat through the whole Cat the Melon yes. show like, and, and had to remind him, like, so what did you want to tell me? Right, he was right. like, okay, you're right. But he only did that because, like, it was colorful. And I'm like, don't even try. Right. Like, it doesn't matter. He did it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you yes. just got to, like, okay, let's let's see about this. Mm -hmm. So I love that you bring up accountability, though, because that is probably one of the hardest things for any relationship, right? Yes. Even, like, family, uh, friendships, mm -hmm. no matter what relationship is, that always helps mend things and sustain the relationship when you can take accountability. Yep. And I also believe following through with like changed behavior of what your partner's asking for you Absolutely. to do different. So you come at him and you're like, okay, baby, I have this um, track club. Thank you for helping me. You're working me, you know, working with me in it. Absolutely love that you guys are doing that. Thank then you're you. like, and I also now want to start a clothing line. <laughs> so the clothing line was actually before oh, the track team. Okay. Yes. So I kind of, the way I was able to kind of, do both at the same time. Yeah. Because I'm like, babe, I could do this clothing line and the proceeds from the clothing line can fund this track team. Boom. So that was kind of like my way of getting like a two for one. Yep. That was really the only reason why he kind of went for that because he was like, okay, enough of these, you know. Business ventures. Right. A uh, uh, passion person. <laughs> like, yeah, he was like, we got to tone it down. He's like, I'm retired now. So yeah, that was the way I was able to do my two for one. So the, so I love that you pitched it to him, right? With like the, <laughs> here's, here's the benefits. This is how right, we're going to make right. this work. But you said that he's retired. Do you feel like now that he's not working, he's all up in your mix or do you feel like, Oh, this is great. I love that he has more time for like the family. So, you know what? Um, I was actually really, really nervous when it was time for him to retire. Um, it was on his terms. So that was a blessing. Cause in, in, Many instances, these guys are either um, some, an injury may take them out yeah. or maybe they don't get picked up or something like that. Well, with my husband, he went out on his own terms. He was like, it's been 15 years. I'm, I'm done. That's a long this. time. 15 years just in the NFL. But he's been lot. playing since he was eight. So he was like, yeah. I'm done. Um, so that was that was definitely a blessing that he was able to walk away from the game healthy. 
Um, but I was a little bit nervous because there's like statistics say that like for pro, pro athletes, NFL in particular, mm-hmm. like over 80% don't make it mm-hmm. after retirement. But my husband retired from the field. He didn't retire from working. So he actually still works with the Eagles, the team that he retired from. Mm. So he went from the field to the front office. So it was that was a transition that we went. So he still travels. He still, you know, um, works around football and yeah. around sports in general. So I think it's kind of helped him with his transition from just being on the field because it's still very much a part of his life. Wow. Yeah. So you still then kind of have to juggle or balance getting your – intimacy from him or you know emotional intimacy physical mm-hmm. intimacy all of right. these things if he's still on the road and he's still like this is a, that's a long chunk of your life to have to share your partner with mm-hmm. others how do you do that how do you guys like tap in or recharge with one another and connect you know what um I think it's actually helped us get this far because ever since we've been together for one I don't know him without football I don't even think he knows himself without football mm. So that's, you know, one piece of it. The other piece is we've always had the opportunity to miss each other. And that's Love been that. big. Yeah. So I'm still missing him. Mm. I'm still, like, looking forward to him to come home when that's he's gone. That's how you keep the flame burning, the that's desire. That's keep it burning, right. So I think for us, it's kind of helped us. For some people, you know, maybe they want their man home and under them all the time. Yeah. I've always been pretty independent and, like, I like to do my thing. I like to, you know, kind of whatever I'm work, whatever projects I'm working on. And I don't like the distractions. Not that my husband is a distraction, but with that, it's like <laughs> extra kid. I'm cooking. I'm That's cleaning. What I feel I'm like when my husband's working yes. from home all during COVID. Yes. I'm like, <laughs> right, right. So the little, so the break is, the break is a blessing. Yeah. So yeah, I think it, I think for us it's worked. And then this way. is a spicy life. So then you have to share with us, like, how do you spice things up in your life with him or maybe like with your friends? You don't even have to reference him. Like, how do you spice things up? Ooh, I don't know. That's kind of a hard one, you know, because I'm a little bit of a prude. Ooh. I'm kind of like, I like order and structure, and I like planning We're everything. Like, no spontaneity over here. <laughs> yeah, not too much, not too much. So, I don't know. I'm going to have to work on the spice. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie. <laughs> Maybe he's the spice. Maybe yes. he is the spice in the relationship. Yes. Like, I always tell people that that's, you know, me for mine. Like, my husband is very, like, Left brain, he too is very organized, meticulous. Mm-hmm. He wants, you know, law and order and structure. Right. And so I bring like the spice to the relationship mm-hmm. and I'm okay with like the role that I have to play because you, you do need to know your position when it comes to what your, you know, pros are, what your, right. you know, strengths are in any relationship. Yes. So it's okay. You know what I'm saying? I'll, I'll send you some spicy tips. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> spicy tips. Because <laughs> we want to keep this marriage going. <laughs> no, I mean, it sounds like you guys are doing incredible. Yes. It sounds like you guys are doing yes. phenomenal. And I love that you're able to share even like moments of vulnerability or weaknesses that you guys have had and how you worked through it. Yes. And don't get me wrong. It, we are not perfect by far. But um, this whole uh, pyramid image that we also learned in, in one of the conferences where it's like, you know, you and your spouse are at the bottom and, you know, God is at the top of the pyramid. Mm-hmm. The closer I'm getting to God, the yeah. closer he's getting to God, the closer we're getting together. Yeah. So as long as we keep God at the center, I literally feel like there's nothing that we can't overcome. I mean, I come from a lineage of um, successful marriages. I mean, my parents have been married for um, 44 years. Wow. Um, I have aunts and uncles that have been married for, you know, almost 50 years. So we value marriage. My um, husband's uh, mother and father were married for over 20 years before her passing. So we absolutely come from um, value Do you know how rare and beautiful that is? Like, that is so incredible. Um, Studies show that if you come from a two-parent home dynamic, Mm -hmm. you are more likely to have a successful marriage that's likely to divorce. Mm -hmm. So that's beautiful. I come from a divorce household, so it was very important to me that, like, in order to break some of these generational curses Mm -hmm. that I was uh, very strategic in how I chose, like, my purpose mate for for life. And, okay, well, at least you need to have been in a two-parent home. You need to know what a healthy relationship looks like. Um, And, of course, you know, we, we work together and we teach this for a living, but when you have a, a man who knows, 
who to mirror, you know, what to emulate. And then you write, rewrite your own rules for your relationship. Cause you could have still had that and still not right. know how to run your household, right. Right. but it definitely helps when you have that structure. So that's absolutely. beautiful. Your children Thank are you. set up for success. Thank you. I absolutely love that. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I feel like you have such a well-rounded life and it seems like now you are focused on, um, not just promoting like, you know, your, the girls club that you have on when it comes to track, but like you are really nurturing you now being in the spotlight and your purpose in life. And it's time for you to shine and your husband's on board with that. Yes. Yes. I just think, like I said before, um, what I'm doing through this team, it's my ministry. It's what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, I definitely feel like for everyone, our ministry starts at home. But I feel ultimately we are all here to serve in some form, yeah. whatever that looks like. And it's different for, you know, all of us. Um, but, yes, he's definitely been supportive. Um, he's continuing to kind of push me out of my comfort zone with certain things. And I appreciate him for that. And, um, yeah, I think. Who are you? So without that, and, and this is why it's so important that, like, we make this very clear, I think as Wives and mothers, we can get tripped up in that now becoming who we are in our identity. Who are you outside of wife and mother? I am, and then finish that. Ooh, you really got I know, me thinking I know, today. Because I want the women who are hearing this to ask themselves that. I want them to know and stand firm and like, dang, this is a question that I need to think about. I never thought about it like that. Hmm. Who am I outside of a wife and mother? Michelle Nicole Sproles is a servant. Mm. And it may sound cliche, but I genuinely feel like that's what I am. I feel like I've been serving. Even when I was younger, um, I was even serving my friends. I was, you know, serving my family. Yeah. I've always, that's just been who I am. And I think that's another reason why I'm super, super protective about who I allow in my space, who I allow around me and my family. Because the benefits package is so good. Exactly. <laughs> I love hard. I love bold. <laughs> and I love without ceasing. I, it's just wow. everything in me. So, yes, I would say that's that's who I am. I'm I love that. I love that. No, and, and, and own that, right? Because sometimes we can say, like, well, I don't want to serve others. I want to be served. But it sounds like you actually take a very humble role mm -hmm. in the life that you've lived, right? Like, you do come from this, like, great childhood, and now your kids are living their best lives, mm -hmm. and your husband's living his best life, and you have this great marriage. But you own the fact that, like, maybe I'm not here for yourself. I'm here for others. And mm -hmm. I think that can be very hard, especially during the times that we're living in. Right. That is very self, 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 yes. self. Yes. So I love that we still have people who are owning the fact that they are like, no, I'm here to serve others. It ain't about me. Yes. Okay. That is beautiful. Yes. That's how you've maintained you. this, this beautiful life, girl. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So you have to tell everybody where can they find you if they want to learn more about you, if they want to join your club. Um, I need to learn to run because <laughs> my run is a little off. That's, that's, runners have the best body. Help me get my life together, okay? <laughs> I need to be out there on the track field with you. Oh, that is hilarious. So you can find me on Instagram as well as Facebook. My personal is Michelle Sproles. My name is spelled a little different, M-I-C-H-E-L-S-P-R-O-L-E-S. -E -E um, for my track club, we are West Coast Elite Track Club uh, for IG only. And then for our website, it's West Coast Elite Club. Dot com. Love it. Yes. And you guys can always play with my Twitter or stroke my Instagram at spicy Mati. Go to the spicy life.com schedule a consultation, download this episode, share it with a friend. And there you guys have it. You have just been spiced. Oh. Thank you. The spicy life.